Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Tristcast. I am your host, Tristan Dario, and I invite you to sit back, relax, catch a vibe, and enjoy the show. Hey, y'all, take a moment before you get settled. Follow the Tristcast and leave a rating. All right, I'll see you in today's episode. Peace. I think we are good to go. All right. Fuck all that. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, 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 okay. This is a bit different. I don't know... How's it sound? How's it going? How's it going, everybody? Okay, I'm hearing myself twice, and I think that's because... Okay. (laughs) All right. This is probably going to bother me a little bit, so I'm going to take this off. Just wanted to make sure we were in, you know, a pretty good situation where you could hear me. How's it going? Dude, let's turn this down a little bit. How about that? Coming in clear? Yeah? That's a little bit red still. How about now? How about now? Okay, we're coming in. Okay, yeah, there we go. Um, fuck it. I think this is fine. Uh, because it's barely picking me up on my thing. So, I just want to make sure I'm coming through on here. Yeah, I'm coming through. It looks cool. If anything, I'll just turn myself up on that. But, uh, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Trist Cast in here. Here, what you can... You know, if you haven't been here before and if you haven't experienced one of my live stream episodes before, this is like I did one, but I did like one or two before did some earlier this year. But yeah, now we get to chill out even more, get to relax to the cool music that, you know, I can't hear right now. So um, the only thing is, is that. I just, I can't hear it, and I want to hear it. Ooh, now I got two viewers. What is up, everybody? Got to make sure I hear this, how it sounds. Oh, yeah. So if you guys are watching and you guys are listening and you're hearing the music in the background, let me know if you like it. Leave a comment on the chat if you got anything to say about it, I guess. But um, on this week's episode of the podcast, I would like to... I would like to talk about a couple different subjects. Oh my gosh. And now this is playing through on the iPad. This is so funny. All right. All right. All right. We, you know, things are, you know, a little bit different right now and that's okay. Um, I am just making sure everything is set and ready to go. And then we will be able to move forward. Let me just make sure everything is set up. We're in good standing. I hope everybody's doing well. Hey, if you guys would like to, you're more than welcome to. Let me know how your day's going. Go down into the comments, you know. Tell me what's happening. Tell me what's going on in your own, you know, what what things you're growing through, what things you aren't growing through. But, um... I think I am ready to start and say this. 
Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to today's episode of the Tristcast. This is a little bit different. I am your host, Tristan Dario. We are on stream, so the people who come in to watch this today get to see this week's episode a day ahead of time or, you know, before before the episode comes out. So, um, you know, one thing that I've been going through and the things that I've been doing is communicating, talking, and meeting new people, experiencing their own life journey and how they are growing and how they're coming to be you know I'm meeting I'm meeting a lot more people nowadays that have all this creativity in them and they're trying to get it out and they're in you know we go through those struggles as creatives drifting through what art that we're trying to bring out to the world or what it is passionately that we have within us that we're trying to get out for the for the world to see or you know some of us are experiencing life and our way of giving back to the world is by going through what we go through giving it to others so then they can take our own personal experience be able to put it into their own way of living and how they could make you know simple decision making or like choose to make different choices that could lead to an improvement in life for our own selves, for the others around us, so on, so forth. One of those one of those topics right now that I have uh, been really going through lately is addiction. I talked about this a little bit before, a couple episodes ago or so, or maybe a while back. Uh, addiction addiction is very important to me. I think it is something to talk about. A lot, I think. I, I just saw an incredible um, snippet from a TikTok or a podcast or like a podcast on Instagram. And so I downloaded it from my iPad. So then I could start, you know, letting everybody in on, you know, what it is I'm finding and how it's benefiting me and how I'm using it as a means Oh my gosh. It's because I changed that. So. And boom, we should be logging in in three, two, one. But like basically everyone these days has an addiction like you or you have a habit and you have something that you're leaning towards something that might be unhealthy or like may not be in moderation and to think that we aren't addicts you know oh my gosh yeah i gotta try another way well i'm not gonna be able to show you that right now which sucks it's okay. But basically, everyone is, someone, you have, every one of us has some sort of unhealthy relationship to something. So to think that we may not have an addiction or to think that we not, or we are not unhealthy, uh, in, we are not attached to something in an unhealthy way. Me, lately, one thing that I have been addicted to is social media. Getting on my phone, figuring out what's happening. Scrolling, passive scrolling is such an unhealthy habit of mine lately because all you can see is just constant, constant. Like me trying to, like I'm on my phone communicating with the people that matter to me, communicating with the people that I want to talk to, trying to further relationships and build stronger bonds and stuff. But, you know, most of the time, I'm on my phone, passive scrolling. What can I find? What can I find? What's going to give me dopamine? What's going to help me feel good in this moment? Not realizing that I'm just overloading my brain, overloading, like burning out all of those receptors that are receiving dopamine, just fucking lighting my brain up, not realizing that it's really impacting me in an unhealthy way like it's not it's not giving me the opportunity to build a close relationship with, with the people I'm close to I am more so finding myself trying to get out of conversations and interactions just to get back on Instagram or get on something that's just going to flood my brain with more information so then I don't have to deal with what's happening around me maybe like 
passive scrolling in, in social media can be such an escape from the real world. And my relationship with social media has been like Siri is trying to talk to me again. She can't get enough, I guess. Um, but like when we are going, when, when I'm sitting down thinking about how much time I'm putting into things that I don't need to be putting, like it's unhealthy, obviously. Like if I'm waking up when I, when I'm waking up in the morning and the first thing I think of is, Oh my God, I got to check Instagram. To me, that's an unhealthy habit. To me, that's an unhealthy relationship. And it gets to the point where like, I'm on my phone so much, even if I'm not even looking at social media, I was finally able to get myself off of it, threw my phone away for two to three hours, and I got away. Come back, then I'm responding to people because I've left them on delivered for an hour, two hours, three hours, because I don't have the energy or the capability or just to get the phone, pick it up, and be like, hey, how are you? I'm so, I'm so sorry for leaving you on this. or like, And then I think about, you know, how important it is to give yourself the space that you need so then you can recharge so that you can give yourself to the others around you that may need something or, you know, or for you to have that energy to go out and interact. And because I was spending so much time on my phone, on social media, not being around other people and, you know, being completely present with the people I was interacting with, leads me to have like this awkwardness make it like it led me to stand in a place now pay mind I smoke weed dude so like when I smoke weed I go from like how I see maybe how I may seem right now super high energy super like yo what is going on and then like when I smoke that trickles all the way down to like energy low like yo what is up i am chill the fuck out right now i can sit here and mumble i can sit here and just rest like that's it, it changes so like when say because i've spent this amount mo- this amount of time on social media haven't interacted with anybody haven't had a real conversation with anybody then i get met with family family comes home from work family's like hey how are you how was your day i'm sitting here having a conversation and i'm in my brain's like how the fuck can we escape this right now how can we run away from this interaction be alone and just find something that's going to comfort us that's so unhealthy for me and like it's so scary for me because as an extrovert as someone who loves meeting people talking to people being around energy and having that energy to like just float from and stuff like that if i'm afraid of having an interaction how the fuck am i going to actually inter- like how am i going to build relationships how am i going to get close with people because i can barely let anyone close enough in because of how afraid i like you know And so, like, when I'm dealing with this and when I'm paying attention to it, I always get, like, one of my friends who's just like, be gentle on yourself. Like, come on, you can do this. You're just in a moment where you got to be a little bit easy on yourself. But my brain is like, you don't have time for this. And, like, it's like my brain or my ego is just, it gets into this, like, Rocky Bulba type thing, like, this is the persona my brain goes into. If I'm not reaching an expectation that my ego wants me to like achieve, it gets into this Rocky Bulba persona. And it's like, if you don't reach this level that I'm telling you, you need to reach, it's going to be a boxing match in your brain. And then, you know, anger comes in and then, you know, an over an overload of emotions, feelings, what I can't, you know, acknowledge or what I'm having a hard time processing and and you know like these addictions like this addiction of ch- like chasing that dopamine fix because I'm sitting here and I, I don't know what to do I don't know what to pay mine I'm a creative I have all of these ideas I've seen where I want to be I know what I want to make but because I'm spending this amount of time on like this excessive amount of time on social media and on my phone, not creating like it, it, that's, I'm giving myself, I'm not giving myself the time to create, to allow myself to just produce whatever it is. It's because I'm chasing like that comfort. 
And that's how important it is to acknowledge when you are acting in a way that's not healthy for your life or for your day-to-day life or for your mental health. Because if I go to spend my first 30 to an hour of my day on social media, that's going to impact how I can maneuver through the day. It's going to impact how much else I'm going to be on my phone after that. And so on the days where I get to finally sit down and I get to be in my thoughts and I get to be with myself, that's when I'm just like, thank God. Like these moments where I get to be away from my phone because like my phone is my camera. When I'm when I get to be when I get to be in my output, dude, it just feels so good. Because then it's like, dude, look at how much I completed today. And I wasn't on my phone a shit ton. I actually didn't go past my time limits that I've set for myself. Pay mine, though. I'm very, very, very proud of myself for this. And I give myself a hug, give myself, like, mental kisses all over. Because I'm just like, I deleted Twitter. I was on Twitter for such a long time. And I was so afraid to leave Twitter. Left it. Deleted it. Don't even go on it on my iPad anymore. My it, the only the only like I just put Instagram on here. Cannot log into it. That's a good thing. I have TikTok on here. Probably shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't. But like a lot of the TikToks I find that I really want to talk about on my on the podcast here are actually on TikTok. So like, and I'm starting to download some, which is why I downloaded Instagram on here. But like, I have a lot on Instagram now too. So like. I had I was given this incredible idea by my friend Chloe Sullivan. She's on she's been on the podcast. You guys should definitely go and check out our episode. Uh, it was a conversation with Chloe. I You guys would love it. We talk about a lot of beautiful things. We talk about how society leads us to not have the proper education, how society or the government's trying to control the information we know how we receive it and how we put it out there and stuff like that so like she's she chloe is one of my favorite people i've ever met because chloe is one of the people who got me thinking more about politics it's why one of my favorite quote one of my favorite quotes by um i believe it is plato and it's if if we are to give the entire ability to the like for us to not do anything politically or for us to not be a part of politics, we are giving the people that are lesser than or like we are letting the people that we dislike control what happens around us. And like she's one of the reasons why like I led into that whole sanction of being a part of what's actually happening in society, actually wanting to make a difference, actually not wanting to see this shit keep going in circles. Even if people don't fucking like what I have to say, I could care less because I stand by what I have to say. Men shouldn't be fucking voting on women's bodies. Um, nobody should be telling anybody how they can dress or how they can use the fucking restroom. Nobody should be telling people what fucking medical surgeries they want for their body. You know, like that's not in our right. If you want to spend your money and if you want to be who you are, go fucking be who you are. Go spend your money on how you want to spend it. I don't see why there's a lot of people in our world that likes to make fucking rules over everybody. It's just annoying. It's fucking rule not to go outside and smoke a fucking plant, but the plant just grows all over the fucking planet. Oh, no, no one should be able to have that because that opens their minds. I need my water. I'm very opinionated. I don't, and obviously... Well, addictions. Besides addictions, I'm still going to try. Like, I can't, I can't even, I gotta, I would love, love to be able to do this. Oh. Oh, no. Well, Instagram really doesn't want to give me this at all. Like, but let's see if TikTok's going to let me. Like I said, this is very I hope you guys are enjoying the music because I can hear it. It's it's a fucking J Cole, dude. J Cole's fire. 
What the fuck? What the fuck? I don't want... What? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um... And then... Uh-oh. Hmm. Things for the podcast. Ah, oh, dude. How... Oh, no. That is definitely... So, addictions in dealing with ADHD... That is for sure what I really want to talk about. That has been on my mind. So there's a video. Markiplier is on it. A lot of people know it. Um, I'm, I'm going to do my best. But basically, you know. You, you can want to do something. You can be at the, yeah, you can want to do something. You can be at the place where you're ready to do something. Like you could be, it's like say you're like, say you're like Markiplier and you record video games and you do all that with people. So like as a creative having ADHD, I can have all of these ideas in my mind. I could live in my head. And I could be sitting here like, oh, I could do this. This is what I could do. I could start here. I have this. I can make an episode out of this. Or I can make a video out of this. But if it's not stimulating, like if it's not mentally turning me on, like getting excited for it, I can't do it. And like with how motivation works for people with ADHD is like you, I could be doing this podcast every week for three years straight. And I can still deal with this fight of having motivation, not having motivation, liking it and thinking that I'm not doing at all what it is I'm supposed to be doing. And then having to deal with all of the ideas I have, thinking about my past and how low I've been or thinking about my past and how high I've been. Say, for example, when I first started the podcast, I was at the lowest I've ever been. Like I was at the lowest. I was financially unstable I was mentally you know going through probably the hardest point for my mental health for my physical health I was not in a place where I was at my happiest or healthiest but I was able to output all of what I was going through instead of like getting super detailed about what I was going through I was able to talk about what I was experiencing putting it into the podcast now a year forward, I'm not in the same place as I was. I have, I am more stable than I have ever been and I'm grateful for it. And I'm in this new m mentality. I'm in this new mindset. I'm in this all around new growth and I know all these new things. But because my situation then is different compared to where I'm at now, there are different ways that my brain tries to bring me down. There are different ways that my brain tries to tell me you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You are not entering flow. You are definitely resisting. You are forcing this rather and like giving me all of these different reasons why I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing or giving me all these reasons to believe I'm not in the right place at the right time. And because I have continued to push forward, because I have not given up, because I have chosen to not give up and to keep pushing forward is the reason why I remain successful. It is the reason why my struggles with ADHD do, do not overwhelm me. I do not succumb to the issues that my brain may be trying to put on to me because like either my brain's trying to protect me or my brain is just scared of rejection or res or like you know my brain wants to be in control my brain like me myself my like just wants to be like dog no do this instead and you know being a creative and having to deal with that and still be able to be vulnerable be able to put out stuff that you like you know I was just having the conversation yesterday with a new friend you know it's like you can be a super confident person you can make shit that you like but if it's not hitting that exact 
point where you're like, I fucking love this. You're going, you're not going to be satisfied. Like I'm not satisfied with my work and I'm not going to be satisfied. Uh, like a, a true artist is never satisfied with their work. They keep on going. They try to do better. They try to become better and they try to evolve as many times until they find that exact way that brings out what is inside of them exactly to the public or to the people or to the audience that it's for or even if it's for the them, for the artists themselves you know like at the end of the day if you are not trying to beat who you were yesterday if you're not trying to put out something better than what you put out last week or yesterday or three days ago or a month ago you know like your constant desire to evolve into, you know, just build upon yourself, build upon your art, get out what it is that is actually inside of you. I was, ha I literally said, you know, like to other people, an episode could be great to them and they could fucking love it. Me, myself, I could look at that episode and say, I could look at that episode and say, I've done better. Or I think I've done better. Or, I think I could have done better. But, and you know, it's because as, uh, we are the biggest critic of our own work and our mind and what we do and what we say and how we act and how we dress. We are our biggest critic. We're going to give ourselves 199 problems on why we can't do one thing. We're going to give ourselves the reason why what the work we just made isn't good enough. We shouldn't put it out because we don't like it or because we think it's not going to be liked by the people we want to put it out to. You know, I, Nevin gave me an incredible poem from a writer who talks about being a writer. If you have to ask someone about your writing, don't fucking put it out. If you, if you don't like what you're reading, don't put it out. Like, you can't, as a writer or as a creative or as someone who wants to make content or wants to, you know, influence or somehow has something in them that they're trying to put out for the world to see, you can't be worried about what other people think. You can't be worried about how other people are going to see it. If people are getting battered by your work, you're doing good work. If people are, are questioning things because of your work, that is good work. Art, creativity in every sense is meant to stir up the world because of the, because of what it is. If you have something in you, say you are someone who hates how inequality is spiking all across the planet and you want to put out art that represents equality, that changes people's minds, forms communities, you have within you the exact way that you need to put it out. You may be overthinking. You may have ADHD yourself. You may struggle from different mental health illnesses. You may have something that stops you from putting out your work. But when you figure out that you are the one in charge of it, when you are the one, when you realize that you have everything you need, everything that it takes, it's completely different. And like you, once you reach into that, once you lean into that, you start putting out work that is more closer. And then you start to notice, oh, this is kind of like what I was looking for. This is kind of like what I wanted. This is the style I was going for. This is the, and, and you start getting the response from the audience. Like they're like latching onto it. Over the course of the journey of your art, of your own creative experience and how you put it out, you will see how it forms into that perfect way. And as I say this, I'm answering my own like thing. When it comes to the podcast, you know, I sit here and I'm like, I'm a year in almost now, pretty much. What's going to happen now? Like, where is this going to go? Or how is this going to change, you know? But when we release it and we're just like, instead of taking a break from doing it after hitting a year or instead of just taking a couple of weeks off, seeing even farther how, how far it can go, you know, like put in perspective this, say you have a podcast, you do it for a year, then you hit that year mark. So then you decide, Hey, I'm going to take a three month, you know, hiatus. I'm not going to do this anymore for the next three months, gain some experience. So then I have something to come back on, come with a different way of doing it. Well, say all of your episodes blow up then. So then by the time you get back three months later, Everyone's wondering where the fuck you are. Everyone's like, oh, well, I guess they stopped making it. 
then you got to restart. Then you got to rebuild that. You got to rebuild that trust. You got to rebuild all this for not only the audience you had originally, but for the new people who have joined. And then you're going to have more stress. Oh, well, what are these new people are going to want? Like, what do they think? All of these thoughts are going to go through your mind, racing around. You're questioning what it is that you need to put out, what you want to put out. And that's why the journey of figuring out yourself, the journey of the journey of introspection and figuring out who you are, how you bring yourself outward and how you like what how you, what your output is and how you put out what you have in you. You figure out what works best for you. And so instead of going three months hiatus, you could just keep on going and just keep doing episodes. So now all these people are coming in, loving the podcast that you've had. They're like sticking in. And instead of taking a hiatus, you're just making more and people are loving it even more, sticking to it, abiding by it, loving every second of it. And I think personally, that is where the decision making, the choice is yours. Do you either have the passion to do this or do you just want to run away from it because you're afraid to either keep going, the consistency is too much for you, you don't know how to keep going, your your ideas aren't, you know, remaining original, you know, but like that's why the dance of creativity is so amazing and, you know, as a creative, you just have to... F- you just have to maneuver and surf the fuck out of those waves because when you surf them and you better have and when you have a better idea of how you can really put yourself out there you know it's different and working w- and working on stuff with ADHD can really hinder that because you're constantly thinking about what you can do on this, what you can do on that. If you had this, you could do that. Or just decision paralysis. I, t- I talk about that a lot. I talk about a, a shit ton because it ha- it's happened a lot. But I think that's something that people with ADHD deal with. They don't, like, us individuals don't know how to put out what we have. And, like, if we don't find the exact way that lights up our brain... It's just not going to happen. And like uh, just thinking about this, like looking at this, streaming this episode and just like I think about, you know, how far I've came. I think about how far and who I am now. And I'm just like, I really like how I've been able to cope with it. Yeah, things seem a little bit jumbled sometimes, but that's me. Like you're getting me and you're getting me vulnerably. You're getting me openly, transparently. And so I love that as a person who embraces and appreciates vulnerability so much because it's something I require in my relationships. Like for me to become deep with you, we got to be vulnerable with one another, even when I don't want to be like my friends, specifically, uh, specifically a couple of them have to be persistent with me because there's times where I fall into that falling into those unhealthy like old habits of like because you're afraid from your childhood trauma and stuff like that or how you deal with things because of because of addictions and stuff it's like really fucking like difficult but then when you find what works for you smooth sailing meditation for me writing it down like i i'm i'm meeting a lot of writers lately and i'm just like wow i i love how in flow i am and how connected to my destiny i am because i write so much now like i've been working on on this blog for such a while it's it's been really cool and it's getting pretty long too like 29 30 pages now so i'm gonna keep on going because what if it turns up into like some sort of (sighs) <sighs> great things great things i um but no i uh i have you know i've been dealing with relationships too i don't i don't really take things personally as much anymore i've been able to get away from that but, you know, there's certain things, certain people, certain... Ugh, just gets on my nerves, dog. But at the same time, I shouldn't. You know, I think about what Tyler the Creator said. Like, if you can... 
if you can talk confidently about something that you know and you can get someone else stirred up, that just shows that that person who's getting stirred up doesn't have enough control over themselves. And I recognize that I did something today that wasn't really opening up um, positivity. And I just did something today that I realized after the fact was probably not good for me. Good for me or the, for the people involved. But at the same time, at the same time, I don't think what I did was terrible. Like, it wasn't even that bad. It was more like a joke. But... It's like when you are joking around with people and you are clearly or obviously joking around, but the people that you're joking with just take it seriously and disrespectfully. So, like, it, it's just a weird, fickle thing. Um, I personally, this is actually a, a real fucking thing, and I don't talk about this a lot. But how I respond to certain things because of my own trauma, because of my relationships, and because of what I think certain things should be like, those kind of things, because it's not happening the way that I believe it should be, or it's not the way that I think it should be, I get very upset, and I experience anger on a level where it gets me shaking, where it gets me so fucking... Put, like putrid mad like you like I would say something and you would be able to hear the venom on my tongue and you would just be like why what's going on with you what what is the purpose of that and because I'm becoming more aware of these moments like I was like this earlier today and I remember I looked I remember I looked at myself through a mirror like in my mind, in my mind, I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, why are you allowing this level of anger to be going up inside of you? Now it's perfect to feel it, feel it, understand and learn from it. Like f where, where is it rooted from? Like, where is this stemming from? And you know, my anger stems from the people who disrespect me or don't show me the respect that I show to them. And I don't like it when people disrespect me when I obviously give them respect. I don't think anybody fucking likes it because it's annoying. It's weird. It shows that other people clearly don't care and expect the like expect that energy from people regardless if they give it away or not. And like that's also me. Like I can't ha I can't place expectations on people. And that is a habit sometimes. I have to be able to give up what I think people should be like. I have to give that up. Especially if I'm trying... If I'm trying to create a community, if I'm trying to push out information that could change the world or help people lean in towards peace, calmness, compassion, and love, I have to be open to the fact that there's going to be people who don't agree. There's going to be people who don't give a fuck. There's going to be people who look at what I have to say, and there's going to be people who literally look at me and say, Tristan, I don't give a fuck. You're stupid to me. And I have to be okay with that. I, th I have to be. Because I'm not going to be able to... Co I'm not... Like... It is unrealistic to think I can bring everyone with me. So I instead will bring as many people with me as possible. Anyone who attaches or resonates to what I have to say, anyone who agrees and is looking for the same community that abides by the same thing, if you are looking for a place of love and understanding and, uh, and to be supported in your own growth as you are changing, evolving, and becoming more and more your best potential. You know, like, I feel like, you know, even if I can't get everybody, I, I, I will do everything in my fucking power to get as many people as possible. And whether or not there are people there, whether or not there are people who are against it or not, you know, there's going to be people who are against love. There's going to be people that are like, no, I want life to remain the same as it is. And I don't want these people changing it to some sort of altered fucking state. You know, that's OK. I will understand that because 
as I sit here and I have my opinions on how I think life should be and I stand here working towards making the change that I believe the world needs, there's going to be people who go up against me. But what people will see is that I will do everything in my power to remain respectful, to listen and give people, you know, the time to speak and to be heard. And I I will not be disrespectful towards others. I will give respect. And if I don't receive it back, that clearly tells what kind of person those people are that I come across. And I'm okay with that. I think I've gotten to a place where I don't take I don't take it personally all the time. And I'm taking less and less things personally. It's one of the four um I was just told these, but it's I believe the four um agreements. Remembered it. So good. The four agreements. And you know, don't take things personally. Um always strive to do your best. And there's two others. I can't think of it all top of my head right now. I connect with that. I connect with the eightfold path in Buddhism, you know, like, so as I'm going through this process of trial and error, which is so funny to me because I just read my spirit, my like a spiritual spirituality chart. And it said like one of my main ways that I'll learn my most life lessons is through trial and error. So when I find myself responding in a negative way, or I am, you know, inflicting what I feel because someone disrespected me. If I'm finding myself inflicting that onto another person who doesn't deserve it or reciprocating it back to the individual who's giving it to me, it's not doing me any good. And it surely doesn't do the situation any good. So becoming stronger in becoming stronger and holding on to like how I respond in situations and improving the way that I feel my emotions and how I let them out. As I grow on, it's just going to get better. It's, I'm going to lead to better ways that I can dispose or feel what I'm feeling, but not like lash out on everybody because I don't want to lash out on anybody. I, whatever war is going on within me, I don't want someone to have to have that pain inflicted onto them. Like, I don't want that. And I've, I, you know, that's one of the biggest levels of growth we can make is when we are able to stop and pause before responding or reacting. So if something bad happens to us and someone treats us like shit, being able to stop instead of saying, you know what, fuck you or get physical in it, you know, being able to just be like, I feel very disrespected here. I'm not appreciating this. I'm a, I don't believe we can walk away from every um, situation. I find myself thinking like walking away is the answer to every situation, but it's not. And if we are constantly walking away and not fighting for something that obviously matters, that just shows that we're more likely just to run away in a situation that we shouldn't run away from. Or like say there is a situation that we shouldn't run from, but because we're so used to just walking away, that's not a good answer all the time. So having to find a better way to cope with how a situation is being handled and be able to read the room, read your own feelings, read the feelings happening in the room and just be like, you know, obviously that's the same as reading the room, but like taking that and instead of responding immediately because someone's disrespected us, be able to keep our cool and be like, listen, I'm not going to tolerate this next time. I'm not going to deal with this. It's either you respect me and give me what I deserve or there will not be any sort of situation where you and I are, you know, a part of each other's lives or this or that, whatever it takes for you to be within your peace. But one thing I'll say is walking away, running away, or choosing not to say anything at all isn't the answer all the time. Space isn't the answer all the time. Sometimes we're going to have to stand in an uncomfortable situation and we're going to have to speak our mind whether or not someone's going to, one, take what we're saying and give us the respect when we're saying it or, you know, whether or not what it is. We have to be able to stand our ground and we have the confidence to do it. We have the ability to do it. I see I see myself all the time in that in that stance, but. 
no matter how you may see yourself, in that moment, you have to make sure you're under control. You have to have your emotions under control. You have to have your reactions under control. You have to be in control of how you're going to respond. And that takes time, effort, and practice. That's not just something you can say, oh, I'm going to do this overnight. It's not. It's something that you got to meditate over, dude. If you don't believe in meditation yet, you really, you really got to. You really have to because... I don't know if you guys are, yeah, you guys are probably hearing my end music right now if you're on the stream, and if you're not, yeah, no one, hey, it's like, I think, I think I got out my point, I don't need to keep going forward on that, but these are three topics that really matter to me, addiction, our ADHD, how we work through ADHD and controlling our emotions, how we react in situations, not disrespecting someone because we feel disrespected. So with that, I would like to say, I think today was a very cool episode, very different compared to, you know, what I've been doing. So, I really enjoyed sitting down with you today. It looked like everything went smooth. Everything was fine. So I'm happy for that. But um, I'm going to check something real quick. Yeah. I think we're doing good. I think we. I think this is a great time to stop, actually. um, So, yeah. With that, I would like to say I hope you all have a wonderful morning, a wonderful afternoon, a wonderful evening, and a wonderful night. Peace. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all this. Thank you for all my lovely people who watch, who listen, who who fucking comment, who are expressing their love for the podcast, who are supporting me every step of the way. I love you all. I appreciate you all, and I hope you all have the greatest week of your life. I hope great things come to you. I hope you get great news. I hope you get blessed abundantly. Don't let other people stop you. Don't let the thoughts of others stop you. Don't let yourself stop you from getting out what you have within you. You got it all. You have the right tools right now. Even if you think it's not enough or it's not the same quality that you see, just remember, just because I have this $100 mic sitting in my hand does not mean that I didn't start with something that you could hear an echo over a room. You know, like, take what you have in the moment, your laptop, your fucking desktop, whatever you have, it will work. If you think you got to have some sort of setup, if you think you got to have some tool, dude, I shoot this shit on my camera, on my phone. My laptop sits right here. I got my focus right, right here. Dude, you just have fun, man. Just have fun creating, getting out whatever the hell that you got within you. And I'm probably going to say it one more time because this is the real end. I hope you all have a great week. Have a wonderful morning. Have a wonderful afternoon. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful night. I love you. Peace.